Commissioner's Week continues here on Midwest Sportsnet, and we get to visit today with Will Pruitt, who is the conference commissioner for the Great American Conference, the commissioner since its inception back in 2011. I want to start there, Will, if we can, to just say you've been there since the beginning. I mean, since the inception of the, of the conference, had nine members then, six from Arkansas, three from Oklahoma. How, how did you come about this role? How did you get it? You know, Joey, it's something that I've really been around small college athletics my entire life. Um, you know, my first job, I was, um, you know, I think, six years old. I had to have a booster seat to see up over the uh, scores table. My, my mom worked for the athletic department at Cumberland College, now University of Cumberland's um, NAI school in eastern Kentucky. My great uncle was the AD. My dad took care of the um, – game day work of getting the officials in and out of the building. Um, so, you know, my very first job was I had a booster seat to see up over the scores table to help the stack through. Um, you know, I shagged foul balls at the baseball games. It's something I've been around really my entire life. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever had a job that um, other than when I was in grad school, um, you know, Definitely the outlier in any of my jobs. I helped um, make snow at a ski mountain in Boone, North Carolina when I was at App State. But, you know, I helped run summer baseball programs for the county. Um, you know, worked in my hometown um, you know, when I was 14, helping run the adult softball leagues. Um, you know, went from, you know, got out of college, became a a grad assistant in the athletic department at Appalachian State, went from there to Tusculum College for, for about a year and a half, um, and spent uh, just over 12 years as the associate commissioner of the, the West Virginia Conference, another Division two conference where, you know, started out kind of on the sports information side, moved over to the to more of a championship administration, and had, had the good fortune – and really, if you work in a Division II conference, you're going to have your hands in a little bit of everything because you know, we're typically three to five person staffs. Um, but you know, I had a great boss in Barry Blizzard that gave me lots of free reign to be involved, you know, in not only conference affairs but the NCAA committees. And um, you know, it was a great opportunity when this league was founded. And, um, you know, I had worked with a couple of athletic administrators on committees, and they pitched. You know what the, they thought this would be a really good league, and um, you know, Joe, I guess there's a really weak crop of applicants for the job. Um, I got hired, believe it or not, uh, you know, about 13 and a half years ago, and um, you know, I really wouldn't trade my job for anyone in college athletics because you know, I, I think I've got a great staff, I really enjoy the people at our schools, and I think we've got a great culture around our conference, so. Yeah, I've really never done anything else. Now, it, it sounds like you were born for the role. It really does. Um, it, it, you answered it a little bit, but can you maybe more define what you, you see as the role of a commissioner? I think a big piece of it is um, you know, try to set a role in – you know, kind of a kind of a culture. You know, I think we've got a very collegial atmosphere in in the GEC. Our schools, you know, they really, you know, obviously when it's game time, those schools are are competing to win a game, win a championship. But uh, Sean Jones, former athletic director at Henderson State, had a great statement once that I wish I'd been smart enough to think of way back. He was talking about his relationship with other athletic directors. It's like, hey, you know, the only time that we're not on the same team or those few hours that that we're playing a game, most of the rest of the time we're really trying to work together. We're on the same team. You know, we all understand, um, you know, the limitations that uh, you really have in this job, the frustrations that you have in this job at times but also um, the great things that come along with working in college athletics. So I think the big thing, Joey, is, you know, obviously all of us have the nuts and bolts of, you know, we've got to make sure we have you know, a staff that uh, you know, performs the various duties in our office, compliance, sports information, 
Um, people forget, you know, in lots of ways, we're really um, small businesses. So June, June and July are pretty busy in our office, even though we don't have any events going on because we're trying to wrap up all of our end of fiscal year financials and deal with insurance and, and all of those things. It's, it's one of the jokes I make and you know, the, the big, big difference between this level and say someone like Greg Sankey at the SEC is, you know, you're involved in everything, um, you know, all the way down to, and I can't imagine Greg Sankey being in line at, at the Walmart to buy toilet paper for the office at, at the SEC. But um, I think the big thing is, is really just trying to make sure that, um, you know, we've got collegial relationships and they were all pulling together in the same direction to, you know, to try to create a great atmosphere for, for the student athletes that we serve. Now, full disclosure, by the way, here during Commissioner's Week, this is, uh, I'm, I'm speaking with the conference commissioner from my home conference, if you will. I have a couple of degrees from one of the member institutions of the Great American Conference and have had the privilege to get to be on the broadcast for the Great American Conference for more than a decade now. And, and Will, I, I'm very, very grateful that uh, you took a chance on a at least younger version of me. I'm not going to say young but it was a younger version of me at that point in time. So I'm very thankful. I, I would ask, since you have been there since the beginning, is that, is it a benefit or otherwise then to, you know, say, listen, this is all the conference has ever known, but I mean, you don't have anyone prior to look back at and go, well, we can do this better or worse. You know, this <laughs> it's, it's been you from the beginning. Yeah, Joey, the, I like to think that in general, it's positive because you know, everything that, you know, literally has happened other than, you know, the original one or I think it was maybe two meetings, maybe three that um, presidents had prior to, to when I was hired. So, you know, I really understand, you know, all the background and everything that comes with this league. Um, you know, it's something that you know, I think it's a positive and it's something um, you know, I take incredible ownership with. Um, it's you know, it's not just a job. It, I really care deeply about our twelve member schools and and the coaches, student athletes that that participate in our league. Um, you know, and the big thing you know, where it can be a little bit of a drawback, quite honestly, is you know we've been blessed that we've had um, really. You know, incredibly low staff turnover. And I've only had two sports information directors. I've only had two compliance coordinators. Mm -hmm. um, I've only had one HR and and financial person. So, um, you know, you can get into a little bit too much of a hey, this is how we've always done things. But I think that's where you know when people come from other conferences, like hey, how'd you do this in in your league before? Um, it's something, you know, I have conversations with with friends that have moved on to other jobs. Um, you know, hey, how did you guys do this in your league? And we have a lot of conversations. I just got back from Las Vegas um, commissioner's meetings last week and um, happened to be on the plane, plane back to Love Field from Las Vegas and shared um, a row with Matt Wilson from the Gulf South Conference and Jay Perner from the Lone Star Conference. And, you know, we just sit there like, hey, how do you guys do this? How do you do this? You know, what are you happy with in your league? What are you not happy with? And, you know, try to be open, open-minded to ways that we can do things better. I, you, with uh, all that goes on, you know, you talked about uh, what happens when they're not competing, but, you know, they go out and compete. These teams compete. And <laughs> the GAC has had a number of teams that have made deep runs into the playoffs, but the first team championship, and it happened in football this past season in 23-24, the Harding Bisons come away with the victory. What's something like that mean to the conference? It means a lot in, in public perception, especially when it's a high-profile sport like football. And you know, I really got a kick out of it the Lindy's National College Football Preview that just came out that has three GAC teams in the top 20, and it talks about um, Super Region 3 being a gauntlet. 
but the Great American Conference being a gauntlet in and of itself. And you know, we didn't always have that kind of, you know, we, you know, we've always been a really good conference, I think, from from day one. But, uh, you know, we're, we're in a pretty impressive neighborhood. You know, all of the conferences surrounding us have been the conferences that, you know, by and large have been the most traditionally strong conferences in Division Two, from a competitive point of view, from a financial point of view, from, you know, kind of the the power that those conferences have in you know being on committees, et cetera. And, and I think we've shown that we can compete with anyone in division two and just in just about any sport. Um and Joey it was it was rewarding and, and to be perfectly honest, I'm glad that there's a game that was pretty much decided you know eight to ten minutes to go in the third quarter, if not a little bit earlier. Um, because we've been so close so many times, um, you know, Southwestern with the, with their near miss in women's basketball, um, Southern Arkansas on a couple of occasions in softball, Southeastern um, with the, with a great run in in softball, and and I don't want to forget about Arkansas Tech winning and winning a national championship in golf, but it is just a little bit different when it's when it's something out of those. You know, more high-profile sports, your football, volleyball, basketball, baseball, softball. So, you know, that was a lot of fun. And forgive me for the folks in Russellville. I needed to clarify that statement, so I appreciate you doing that for me, Commissioner. Uh, in, in light of that, let's, let's stay with the high-profile sport then for just a little bit longer with football because the conference – doesn't I mean whether you say it hosts or has plays a large role in a Division Two bowl game, the Live United Bowl, and the Great American Conference ha- has a team that plays in that every year, and it's right there in the conference backyard. And yeah, we we've been fortunate that you know, it's been a good experience working with with folks in Texarkana with the Live United Bowl. You know, gives back a really positive event. You know, the money that's made from that event goes to the Greater Texarkana United Way, and you know, it's so hard. Division two football, there's you know, there's 28 spots in the playoffs, and quite honestly, the you know, that might be enough if we took the best 28 teams in the country. But in the regionalization structure of Division two. You can legitimately be a top 15, top 20 team in Super Region 3 and <clears throat> have a shot that you're not one of those top seven teams that gets in the playoffs from SR3. So, you know, the ability for some of our student athletes to extend their careers with with that extra game and have that sense of achievement. And, you know, we're really happy that, that we're also able to um, – you know, to be involved with the, the Fun Town RV Bowl down in down in Texas, we've had Oklahoma Baptist won that game two years ago. Southern Nazarene capped off a tremendous season last year by playing in that game. So, you know, not only having um, one tie-in but another close relationship that we're able to get two teams into bowl games beyond the um, two or three teams that we that we've seen in most years make the playoffs. It's been a big deal. And and let me say something else about the the GAC. When when I first started to be associated with it a little bit more, I'd been a broadcaster at one of the schools for a number of years, but really getting to to work at the conference level. And Will, I would say almost from day one, definitely the first weekend that I was there, uh, people talked about the GAC being a family. And it's something that that played out to me with with my first experiences, and I've seen it from the beginning to where it is right now as we're wrapping up the 23-24 athletic year. Can you talk about that? I think you may have, have said it with what uh, you've already said about the, the commissioner, or excuse me, the the administrators, but it, it really has a, a family feel from coaches on. Hey, Joey, I think a lot of that goes, we just have really good people that work at our schools that you know, I think you know, they're super competitive, they want to win. But I think by and large they have um you know a good perspective on where um athletics falls within within a framework of you know 
your your direct families, those student athletes they work with, faith, um, and and we've had so many people that have been around um, for for the entire existence of the GAC that and I think we were fortunate enough to really have that um, something that was baked into the foundation of this league, and we've always had a good core of people that have tried to maintain that sort of sort of feeling when. Um, you know, in some ways, it does feel like a little bit of a family reunion when we have those championships, and you get the chance to spend time with with other people from around the conference. All right. Well, I, I wanted to take it beyond the conference level for just a moment. I know that commissioners have so many different roles that you play. Are there any roles that you play specifically with the NCAA on the Division II level or on, on the national level in, in any form? So, Joey, I've been involved in a number of different ways um, during my time at the GAC. I've been a member of the Division II Management Council, which is which is the group that um, is the highest ranking group of athletic administrators, just below the um, Executive Council of Presidents. But we hear a little bit of everything. I've worked, <coughs> excuse me, um, Nothing quite like allergy season in Western Arkansas. Um, and currently, I'm a member of the Division II membership committee, which vets schools trying to join Division II and overseas schools going through the membership process in Division II. And really proud that as I have a term that ends in July, one of the changes we've been able to affect is conceivably that route to becoming a Division II member being lessened by one year. Previously, schools have gone three years without being eligible for postseasons. Um, now we're seeing that maybe go down to two. Um, if schools are able to hit to hit mileposts and um, and guidelines in the process, really excited to, to see that go into effect. Um, maybe the most interesting committee that, that I've been on because it dovetails with you know particular interest of mine, um, you know, it's not enough that I deal with coaches or administrators that aren't happy, you know, with this, that, or the other through the week. Um, this this coming fall will be my 29th year of officiating high school football. So, yeah, I care deeply about the rules. Um, my wife and, and even some of my friends are like, can't you watch a football game like a normal human being? Because... <laughs> <laughs> and I watch, I watch the officials, you know, really interested in how they work together. But <clears throat> spent a four-year term as a member of the Football Rules Committee. And, um, you know, didn't, this may make me infamous in some some places. I was one of the, the original 12 people in the room when, when the targeting rule was passed. Um, you know, a number of different things that you know, I think have made the game safer and and have helped protect the game from some external um, forces that would have made far, far more extreme changes to the game if, if they had had their say. But you know, I thought that was a really particular, um, particularly interesting thing to be a part of. And I'm also involved in the Division II Commissioners Association. Um, you know, it, it's a lot like you know, I talk about with our athletic directors or whatever. Now, our teams compete against each other in the postseason, but there's a number of us, particularly regionally or in kind of similar type conferences. Um, we text, we call almost every day trying to, um, you know, hey, you know, we dealt with this or, you know, to pick each other's brains and and really, you know, try to make things better across Division Two, And we're really, as a group, I'm trying to become more and more involved with, you know, it's, it's an interesting time in college athletics. Um, you know, I try to look at things as a glass half full. I think there's some really good things that that could happen in Division Two over the next few years. Um, and because I think we really have retained, you know, the sense of proper balance and perspective of where, college athletics fits within um, the framework of higher education. And as an association, we're trying to become more and more involved with um, taking positions on, on matters, um, really trying to, to push um, 
you know, some of these ideas through the Division II governance process. And I've got the good fortune beginning in the 24-25 academic year to be the first vice president of that organization. Uh, you have a lot on your plate. My goodness. And it's still running a conference well. You mentioned something about the, the landscape of, of college athletics and conference realignment is always something that it seems to be at least on, on a division one level, but it happens in, in all levels all the way around. Great American conference started with nine member institutions. It has grown to 10 and then 11 and then 12. Now the OCD part of me, I like that. It's a good number. Six, <coughs> six in one state, six in the other four, uh, public and two private on both sides there. And so there's a, a lot of symmetry there, but I, I would have to ask is, is there, you know, is there ever any thought Do you all ever entertain the idea you or the presidents entertain the idea of expansion in the great American conference? Hey, Joey, that's something that comes up quite often. Um, we evaluate where we're at. Um, you know, we're really proud and, I knew that we've been one of the most stable conferences, not just in Division II, but in college athletics. But uh, the commissioner of the Sunshine State Conference came up to me last week and said, hey, do you realize that we're the only two leagues in the country that um, since 2015 haven't lost a school? And wow. you know, really proud that you know, our goal was to grow um, to 12 as quick as we could. and yeah, we were able to add three schools in the state of Oklahoma that gave us that perfect six and six, four public, two faith-based symmetry. And you know, we talk quite often about expansion. Um, we talk quite often about our sports sponsorship requirements, which you know, that's probably the biggest piece with, with um, whether we would ever expand or not. You know, it's not just you know, we're the only conference in Division II that is made up of all football playing schools. That's not our only sports sponsorship requirement. Uh, you know, we've got six required sports, um, football, volleyball, men's and women's basketball, baseball, softball. So, you know, there's, there are even schools that would maybe hit the football requirement but not hit, you know, a piece elsewhere. So, we talk about whether we want to retain our sports sponsorship requirements. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about, you know, do we need to grow bigger in a lot of, uh, you know, just um, some of the headwinds that are out there in collegiate athletics. But, uh, you know, a lot of things keep coming back to, um, you know, it's not entirely perfect, but there's so many good things about about 12. Um, you know, every school essentially gets to play every school in every sport. Um, you know, other than sports that we don't have universal sports sponsorship requirements, um, you, know, you play everybody in the conference. Um, you know, if you're in the league for two years, you're going to be on every campus at least once in every sport. And we really think those are a lot of things that we don't want to give up. You know, the other piece, Joey, in a, in a given year, we usually see, um, we've seen in some cases, all 12 schools win a conference championship, either tournament or regular season. But in most years, we see um, 10 or 11 schools win championships in some, some sport, be it either the tournament or regular season. Um, the more schools you bring in, you know, you cut down your yeah. your access to winning championships. You also cut down your access to participate in championships. Um, you know, our our standard tournament field is eight schools. You know, if you grow to you grow to fourteen, sixteen, whatever that number would be, um, you know, you either make your championships really unwieldy or or um, you you lessen your championship uh, aspects. Um, you know, in addition, you know, twelve. You know, just is such a perfect number to schedule with. I I can't see us ever wanting to go to a 
to a 13 or a 15 or any sort of odd number. Um, you know, 12 served us well, and you know, th there are, you know, there's probably, you know, in the, you know, since I've been here in 2011, you know, we've probably heard from, from over 10 schools that would be interested in being a part of this league, and we just haven't seen and it's nothing against those schools. It's just we're happy with what we have. Mm. I understand. I think, and that I think that just that that sums it up. Well, I I had to ask. I would be remiss if I didn't ask. So that that was important. You talked about officiating, which I know is a, a big part of what you do when you're not being commissioner. And and I know sometimes you wear more than one hat over the course of a of a day in a twenty four hour period and put some miles on the car taking care of, of all the things that you're involved in. Is there anything uh, that, uh, you know, that you do as, in, in your role as commissioner or just uh, personal life where, you know, if somebody looked at it and go, wow, I, I, I wouldn't expect that a conference commissioner does that. You know, Joey, and you know, I touched on a little bit. I think sometimes people would be a little bit surprised at, at how much time we spend in dealing with the small business type aspects of the job, um, you know, the insurance, the workers' comp, making sure the audit's done, um, you know, some of those pieces. You know, often, often away from the office, um, you know, I'm sure some people think, think you're a little bit crazy to, you know, for fun to go out and let a um, couple of thousand of your closest friends boo you on Friday nights, but, you know, probably the most surprising thing, um, and people that have known me for a long time, this isn't surprising, but, um, you know, we somehow end up being the house that um, you know, either we've, we've fostered um, rescue Labradors in the past or, you know, just it feels like every stray animal in Yale County, Arkansas, somehow ends up at, at my house. But, um, you know, we've been pretty active in, in, in trying to either foster or rescue Labradors or be involved with them, um, you know, in some sort of way in trying to help that community. So, you know, that may be the piece that'd be a little bit surprising to some folks. Well, then let me, let me wrap up our time with this. I appreciate the, the, what you've given and the information that you've shared today. I want to give you an opportunity to give a bit of a commercial then to any student athletes or parents or someone who might be watching that, that has someone that they might like to send to play at a division two school and a great division two conference. Give us a bit of commercial as to why they should play for the great American conference or one of the member institutions. Hey, Joey, you know, the biggest piece that I would sell is, is the balance. You, know, you come to our, you come to a great American conference school, not only are you going to have the chance to play some really high level college athletics, you're going to have the ability to be involved in other things on campus, get a good education, um, be in a family type environment, but also be in a, a footprint that, you know, it, it's not a short trip from, from Alva to Monticello, but when you look at, you know, what's going on in Division One? what's going on in some Division Two conferences. You know, most of our travel just makes sense. And, you know, I think we can just offer, you know, we can't offer all the bells and whistles that some folks do. But if you want to get coached up by good coaches, play against good competition, enjoy some experiences beyond the playing field, um, I think you do a whole lot worse than, than looking at one of the 12 member institutions of the great American conference. All right. Will Pruitt, the conference commissioner of the great American conference since its inception back in 2011. And I appreciate what you've done and I, I will take a personal note to say, I think you've done it well. And it's been a privilege to get to work with you and for you in that role. Will Pruitt, conference commissioner of the GAC. Thank you very much for taking some time with us today here on commissioner's week on Midwest sports net. Joey, thank you.